Thank you for joining 3M's webinar. Here we will be exploring adhesive bonding in the automotive and aerospace sectors. Jeff Catt will be speaking to you today. He is an application engineer who specializes in composites. With 16 years of experience in the commercial application of adhesives, he has worked on a wide range of vehicles from transit vans through to McLaren and now aero structures. Jeff has spent the majority of his time at 3M specializing in automotive applications but has recently moved into our aerospace division, applying our technologies to composites across many industries. Okay, now I'd like to introduce Jeff Cap. Well, thank you to you all for joining today. Um, as far as outlined, I've had the benefit of um, working over several markets, primarily automotive and aerospace. And it's been fascinating to me how the same science of adhesion is applied so differently to the different markets. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk through um, the application of adhesives in both aerospace and automotive and compare and contrast the different sectors and approaches. But before I get into the detail of that, I'd like to talk a little bit about 3M. If you know nothing else about 3M, it's important to understand that we are a science-based company. But we believe that science is just science until you do something with it. In all sorts of ways, big and small, we use 3M science to improve lives, solve problems by working closely with our customers and also with each other. This is what 3M strives to do every day. 3M is made up of five business groups. Aerospace and Automotive is based in industrial, and this is our biggest business in terms of revenue. The areas that industrial covers include purifying air and water from residential to biotharm, pharma and industrial, and also modifying, bonding and protecting surfaces in construction and manufacturing. We improve the design and manufacture and maintenance of land, air and water transportation. From cargo boxes to baby babies' nappies, we secure the things that need to stay put. The image that you can see on your screen represents 3M's glass bubble technology. We are a pioneer in glass bubbles and they're used in a wide range of industries, from including car and aero parts, to reduce weight and lower cost. Unique to 3M is the breadth and diversity of our technology pool which reflects our uncommon approach to R&D. At 3M we do R&D a bit differently. We separate the R and the D. Scientists in our central laboratory are free to focus on pure research, looking for unscripted, unexpected opportunities for breakthrough. Whereas those in the, the development teams that I am within, of each of the five business groups, then draw upon these core technologies to develop products for targeted markets and geographies. On the screen, you can see a representation of our 46 core technology platforms, which range from adhesives to abrasives, from sensors to electronic materials. Our team has the uncanny ability to combine and use the technologies in creative ways. That's how a mixing technology originally created for dental crowns has made its way into automotive applications. Looking specifically at our adhesive technologies, it's another example of how 3M technology is applied to different markets through our businesses. Because our adhesives are engineered to fit our customers' unique needs, they're using such diverse products as smartphones and dental fillings through to the aerospace and automotive components that we're going to talk about today. <coughs> so before I get started on the presentation, I'd like to understand why we are interested in adhesives. And I use we in a very broad sense here. It may be the in adhesives industry, it may be the, the aerospace industry, or it could just be us here on, on the webinar. So if you could send in a few suggestions. Okay, we're getting to talk about lightweighting coming in. Um, aesthetics come in here. Um, stress transfer. Okay, I think I can broadly group these in. They come under two headings that I've put here on this slide. If 
first part is about more efficient structures. Be that better stress transfer because of the fact we're using continuous joining technique rather than discrete with mechanical fasteners or welds or rivets. Stiffness improvements. Impact resistance is, is, is another reason. An assembly. Now that may be um, the assembly technique or it might be a neater assembly in order to um, achieve better aesthetics. But also light weighting has, is becoming a more and more prominent reason for using adhesives. But there is another reason. Because we have to. Quite often welding or mechanical fixings are impossible. And perhaps may cause stress concentrations on sensitive substrates such as composites. Thanks for your interaction on that. It's very helpful. So if I start to talk about the aerospace adhesives, and the aerospace industry was really an early adopter, as adhesives are an inherent part, inherent and intrinsic part of producing a lightweight structure. Therefore, the aero industry had to find work, ways to work within the limitations imposed by adhesive bonding. Those are, in the early days, I'm talking about limitations in terms of bond gap, tightly controlling a bond gap, maybe a specific cure cycle or a specific <coughs> surface prep regime. And in meeting these challenges, some very novel processes have been developed along the way. Honeycomb stru structures are a real mainstay of aircraft structures in that they give us the ability to produce very light but stiff panels. However, we need to join the skin panel to the honeycomb. And adhesi adhesives are a key part of being able to do this. But we've got limited surface area and we need to create a variable, very durable bond able to withstand some of the harshest environments. So we developed a reticulating grades of adhesives and you can see that simulated down in the bottom right hand corner where we're blowing air through the molten adhesive or softened adhesive so that it coats the edges of the honeycomb and it creates a filleted joint with no redundancy of the adhesive in the holes in the honeycomb. However, honeycombs have their own restrictions when, when we go to join them. We might need to make a T-joint or a corner or indeed embed a fixing into the honeycomb. <coughs> Therefore, we've developed grades of low density void filler, which can be used to locally reinforce the honeycomb so that we can make a joint. These grades are these low density void fillers are available both as pumpable paste and expandable films. The films being used for areas such as core splices or edge finishing. And a key component of the low density void fillers are in fact the 3M glass bubbles that I mentioned earlier, enabling us to achieve low, very low densities but re retaining good mechanical properties. In the top right corner, you can see one of these structures I'm talking about, a T-joint with a coarse splice. And this is an example of an aero, aero interior structure. But however, it's a very simple example. You can imagine that an overhead locker or a gantry will, will require some quite complex structures. <clears throat> and this in turn drives some quite innovative approaches and demands on, on the joining solutions. However, the interior market also gives a further challenge in that it has very strict flammability requirements. And this has been a particularly important development area over the last few years, unfortunately related to disasters, to disasters such as that at Manchester airports. There are different regulatory requirements in different regions. And the and an aircraft manufactured in one location are actually controlled by the regulations of the country that they fly into. So therefore, it tends to be the most stringent regulations that are applied. There are two designations, fire retardancy, which is to do with managing the, the burn of a product and the spread of fire, and fire smoke and tox toxicity, FST, which is, uh, deals with the chemicals produced when, when something burns, when a product burns. And 3M aerospace developments have focused on FST or FR compliant adhesives for interiors since 2005. 
And in 2007, we, we launched a, an innovative product, which is a flexible epoxy technology 7246-2 as the first FST compliant non-halogenated paste adhesive for the interiors market. Another application that, that delivers an extra challenge is the engine environment, where the adhesive bond, bonded joints need to perform at elevated temperatures. And our adhesive technologies are used in a wide variety of structures, such as the nacelles, with air inlets, bypass ducts and thrust reversers, and also sound suppression, sound suppressant sandwich panels. Low density void fillers are used as fan track liners within the engine casing, where we apply the low density void filler and then allow the tips of the blades to wear away some of the, the fan track liner to create a very high tolerance, high tolerance gap and enabling very high, high efficiency. We've also developed impact resistant sandwich panels using a combination of 3M adhesive and low density void filler technologies. And these are able, uh, enable us to deliver solutions for managing blade release events. But the aerospace market isn't standing still. It's evolving into more and more demanding applications, be that load, be that loading, temperature, durability, or in fact weight reduction in the ever-growing need to make aircraft lighter. And the aircraft interior is providing a, a particular challenge with customers, be that the end user or the aircraft manufacturer or the airline demanding increased functionality, legislation demanding higher levels of safety, and weight reduction to reduce, reduce emissions. Coupled with that, aircraft are at the highest build levels yet, which is demanding increasing productivity and some new methods of producing components. I'm going to test who's awake now in that I'm going to open up for a poll. So which do you think weighs more, the aircraft structure or the aircraft interior? Or third option, are they around about the same? Got some votes coming in. Oh, we've got some smart people on the line. Yeah, we've got 80% choosing the interior. Absolutely, I'd agree with you. But interestingly enough, that's not dissimilar from the automotive environment, where we're all demanding much, much more from the interiors of our vehicle and, and with the safety requirements as well, driving the weight up. So if I start to compare the two industries now, as demonstrated, the aero industry has really embraced the use of adhesives. However, the auto industry is not, is not far behind, waiting in the wings, sorry, pardon the pun, watching, learning, and adopting some new techniques and developing new approaches. This slide here gives an overview of the use of adhesives today in the automotive industry. We've got those traditional adhesives applications that have been around for a hundred years or so. Plastic trim or wood trim as it was back in the day. Anti-flutter to stop two metal panels knocking together and producing an unpleasant noise. Upholstery and also repair when we, uh, when we damage our vehicles. And we've got the established applications over the last decade or so where we've moved into direct glazing of vehicles. So we're bonding the windscreen directly into the vehicle body. We also have hem flanges where we're joining the inner and outer panels of a door in order to produce a stiffer, lighter structure with better corrosion resistance. Adhesives are also used to wear in metal to metal joints where welding is infeasible, where you can't get the spot weld done in. And in high performance vehicles, really following the aero design rules and adopting the aero products. But we're now moving in what I, to what I would call progressive applications, where adhesives are being used for true structural joining of vehicle bodies to improve rigidity, durability, and crash performance. And this is done by weld bonding or rivet bonding, where the adhesive is introduced into the flanges 
and then welded or riveted through. We're also seeing adhesives used to facilitate the wider range, a wider range of materials and enable weight reduction opportunities. The diagram appearing on your screen now is, is from a presentation that I give specifically looking at how adhesives can be used to save weight. And as you can see, it opens up a multitude of options. We might use adhesives to enable us to down gauge a panel. We no longer need to have that extra material there to facilitate a mechanical fixing of a, of a weld so we can down gauge through the more efficient joining technology. And this may also enable us to eliminate some reinforcements in joint areas, again by better load transfer. Adhesives also offer us the opportunity to integrate the ceiling. So no longer do we have to join and then seal over the top, but the adhesive does the ceiling function as well. But what I'd like to focus on today is multi-material structures. How adhesives can be used to enable us to make a hybrid structure. The vehicle body is a complex structure, and while a great deal of expertise has been established in spot welding of steel, as performance demands are increasing, designers are looking towards alternative materials for greater scope in design freedom. The lowest grade of high strength steels can enable slimmer sections and higher loading, while aluminium skin panels can lighten, hang on parts and enable hinges to be more compact and knock on weight savings. Composite materials can be used where there's a high degree of part integration, part integration such as the spare wheel well or tailgate for example. Using the right material in the right place opens the door to ultra-efficient vehicle structures. But it can clearly be seen that these type of structures are a challenge in terms of joining, representing a, a very broad spectrum of mechanical, thermal, and corrosion properties. The chart here from McKinsey projects material usage trends forward into 2030 and shows a very unfamiliar composition compared with today, with no materials in inverted commas accounting for up to 67% of, of the body structure. So this implies that by 2030, a maximum of a third of the body structure will be easily joined by the conventional spot welding which is so well established today. Use of these alternative materials also gives a further challenge in that much of the expertise resides in the supplier base. And adhesives again can be used to facilitate this in the outsourcing of, of sub-assemblies, providing a low skill and investment approach to joining and enabling the sub-assembly to, to be assembled at the outsourcer and then introduced to the, the vehicle either at body in white or final assembly. And 3M have invested in 2K adhesive technology and structural adhesive films which allow these sub-assemblies to be bonded at the supplier and painted or cured up to six weeks later at the OEM in their paint bake cycle. In terms of 3M and hybrid structures, we have a very extensive track record. 3M adhesives have been widely adopted for vehicle construction with composites or hybrid structures for over 25 years, including some of the most high-profile vehicles. We've learned a great deal along the way. As I highlighted earlier on, 3M has an incredibly broad product pool and technology pool, enabling us to offer complete process capability. From surface prep and primers through the adhesive to surface finishing and then repair of the structure when out in the field. We also offer an extremely wide product portfolio in terms of adhesives. And for your convenience today, I've narrowed this down to just the basic 50. No, don't worry, I'm not expecting you to read that slide. But it does give an idea of the breadth of product that is necessary in terms in when you're producing a hybrid structure. So what we've done is we've tried to boil this down into a domain plot. 
On the far left, you can see the, the performance of the product, moving from sealing through trim attachment to closures and then into co the core structure. <coughs> and on the x-axis, we had the application right the way through from commercial low-cost vehicles to Formula One and race engineering and the aerospace um, applications. And on the far right there, I've, I've given some impressions of stress-strain curves, again highlighting the difference in mechanical properties that are demanded through hybrid vehicle construction. But it's not all about mechanical properties. There are processing requirements such as fast de-jig. We also demand no read-through, so this is eliminating any kind of bond line read-through onto the A surface of the vehicle. Minimal surface preparation, low odor, compatibility with e-coat, so currently every vehicle will go through 180 degrees for half an hour for the e-coat bake. And also galvanic isolation, and that we need to ensure that these multitude of different materials are not setting up corrosion cells. Now hybrid construction has really moved along in the last 25 years that we've been involved with it. I've called the first generation the adoption of aerospace adhesives, thin bond lines and high tolerance into things like Formula One and high-end performance cars. We then saw an evolution into much more, much easier to use products, with some vehicle manufacturers adopting low modulus windscreen type adhesives with a high bond gap tolerance, very, very easy to use and surface tolerant. This enabled hybrid construction to be used in, in slightly higher volumes. But it does not get the, get the best out of your high performance material in terms of stiffness and load transfer. Therefore, in recent years, we've moved over to a combined approach using high toughness core adhesives and then semi-structural gap filling adhesives in, in less demanding applications, all the time respecting the strain sensitivity of of the high-performance substrate such as composites. And this is moving hybrid construction into the, into the mainstream. And we've seen a number of manufacturers recently incorporating some quite exotic materials into what you would call mainstream vehicles. So I now feel that we've, we've moved through the two industries well enough to start kind of grouping the way they work with adhesives. With Aerospace, we've really seen the specification or performance-driven approach. Adopting the adhesive that gives the, the level of performance needed for the application and then designing a process around that to, to suit the, the, the needs of the product. So it's really kind of saying, okay, we're going to use adhesives, now how can we work with these adhesives? Automotive has taken a slightly different approach in what is demanded from the adhesives industry, saying, okay, we can see the need for adhesives, but how can we make these adhesives work for us in terms of not changing the structure too much or not changing the infrastructure too much in terms of the manufacture of vehicles? So I'm going to kind of compare and contrast the adhesive selection criteria. A little bit of tongue-in-cheek, so bear with me on this one. Please don't get offended. In terms of so in terms of requirements, let's start with surface preparation. Aerospace will quite happily take on abrasion, primers, and all sorts of exotic surface preparation, whereas the automotive customer will come to us and say, well, the panel's got oil on it, we don't want to take it off. Now give us an adhesive that will bond to it. In terms of bond gap, we need to carefully control to a tight tolerance the bond line that we're, we're providing for our aerospace customers. Automotive customers, in contrast, will want good bead stability and gap fill, required to cope with the very bond, bond gaps that the, that the panel match will, will provide. In terms of cure, we need to be very precise about cure cycles, in uh, ensuring that we get that le hit that level of performance promised for the adhesive in aerospace applications. Whereas automotive ask us to use their current cure cycle um, provided for the e-coat bait. The application environment for aerospace will quite often go into clean room standards, whereas automotive will want us to use their current production facility. 
and we have much more time to apply our adhesive, again, achieving that controlled bond line and, uh, and ultimate performance. Whereas automotive will only give us seconds to apply the adhesive. And in terms of an inspection schedule, thankfully we have a re regular safety inspection schedule in aerospace. Whereas in automotive, it's, it, it's left in the hands of the final customer. But it's not all about differences. There's an awful lot of common ground. Both industries want to produce lighter structures at a lower cost and faster cycle times are needed to hit the production volumes. Also looking for lower toxicity and safer structures with more predictable performance as CAE becomes the mainstream. And hopefully you remember this list from earlier that the aircraft interior is providing a particular challenge. But there's a lot of common ground here with automotive. First of all, customers demanding increased level of comfort and functionality. Well, we're demanding that not only from aircraft, but also from our cars. Legislation is demanding higher levels of safety. And there's also a weight reduction agenda in both industries to reduce the cost of ownership and also reduce emissions. An increased productivity is needed in order to keep the cost manageable and keep the keep the product going out the door at the rate that's demanded by the end customer. Now it's interesting for me coming from an automotive background into aerospace in that I'd not heard of, of FST in automotive. But having learned about that, it's certainly not going to be a surprise to me if FST becomes a requirement for automotive interiors. So it's clear that adhesives have a key role to play both in today's structures and in the planes and cars of the future. Major strides have been made by both industries and in but in different areas. Aerospace in terms of driving the performance of adhesive, adhesive systems and automotive in terms of production methods and making the use of adhesives much more efficient. The flow of information is clearly not one way. Both industries are keen to learn from each other and indeed other industries are reaping the benefit from both the aer aerospace and automotive pioneers. It's a great time to get stuck into adhesives if you'll pardon the pun. We've achieved a lot, but the great prizes are still ahead of us. So today I've shared some of our journey over the last few years. I hope that you found it both informative and inspiring. But if you'd want to know more, we're actually running an Ask 3M Adhesive Bonding Clinic. We're doing this at the National Composite Centre on the, on the afternoon of the 26th of January. And you'll be able to book 20 minutes appointments with me and also my colleagues Bernard Sickle and Andrew Marks. If you'd like to contact me through any of the, the methods listed below, that would be great. But also I think we've got time, a few minutes today, if you'd like to ask some questions online. So we've had a few questions come in. One specifically about how adhesives can play a part in durability and MVH. Very nice question. Thank you very much for that. And there's actually been some studies done on this, that an adhesively bonded vehicle um, gives a noticeable improvement in terms of both the durability, so this is retained torsional stiffness, and also a noticeably quiet vehicle, quieter vehicle is achieved. Now, there, there's two reasons for this. The continuous bond, the continuous joining of uh, provided by adhesives versus spot welding actually changes the MVH response of the vehicle body. But also in, in retaining torsional stiffness, you'll reduce the, uh, the, the squeak and rattle that is developed through, through the vehicle flexing. So hopefully that answers your question. If you need to know a bit more, then please get in touch. Okay, there's, a, there's another question come in, 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 uh, in terms of which is the most demanding um, aerospace or automotive. 
Um, well, I would actually say that they're, they're both as demanding as, uh, as each other, um, but in different ways. Um, yeah, the, the, the levels of performance that we need to, need to achieve in, in aerospace is extremely challenging, um, but at the same time, um, in automotive, the kind of cycle times we're given and the, the, the substrates that we need to bond to are uh, just as challenging. There's there's a question come in uh, regarding stable stable beads and uh, ability to bond to oily surfaces. Are there any plans to make these aerospace qualified? As I highlighted, both industries are learning from each other, um, and certainly we are seeing interest in this kind of um, robustness approach of, of automotive coming over into aerospace. So I can't answer that question specifically, but generally, yeah, we're seeing lots of overlap between the two industries. Okay. Um, Somebody's asked if we can get a copy of the presentation. I think that is, yes, that's going to be shared. Um, and there's a few very specific questions coming through. If they could get directly in contact with me by email, um, I think that they're best dealt with offline. So my email address, um, I'll just put the slide back up, is jekapp, J-E-K-A-P-P, at nnm.com. Of course, find me on LinkedIn. So, so thank you very much for today. Um, I, hope you, I hope you found this interesting and informative and uh, in some ways entertaining. Um, Enjoy your wind down to Christmas, if indeed you're at that point. If not, uh, I hope that you get everything done before you go off for Christmas. Take care.